And joining me now is Ruth Davidson, former leader of the Scottish Conservative Party. Thank you very much for your time today. You tweeted a little earlier. Let me just read a little bit from that tweet. Nobody needs an official to tell them if they were at a boozy shindig in their own garden. People are, are rightly furious. Is that how you feel? Furious? Yeah, and disappointed and aghast and, and, and in all, almost disbelief. I mean, I, I'm trying to remember back to what was happening in May um, that year. Uh, and the day that this was happening um, in Scotland, a mile from my house on Portobello Beach, uh, police were moving individuals on for sitting on the beach on the hottest day of the year. Um, you know, people were being told by police to get back in their house less than an hour before this is all supposed to have kicked off. You had a cabinet minister on national television telling people that they could only meet up with one person outside. Um, I don't know if he knew that there was a, an email going round from a, you know, a senior civil servant asking 100 people to take a bottle into the back garden 20 yards away. Uh, I, I mean, it is utterly appalling. And, and I think it, it was right in your report there that you had from Nick Erdley to say that um, it, it, you know, it, it's not just the Labour Party that are angry about this. There are plenty of my parliamentary colleagues who have no idea what anyone in, in that email chain was thinking or, or how. You know, this is utterly indefensible. It cannot be defended. The BBC has two sources saying that they saw Boris Johnson at that drinks event along with his wife. Why do you think he is yet to confirm that he was there? He has neither confirmed nor denied. Look, I, I don't know. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy for me to say I wasn't at a drinks party in, in the number 10 garden. I don't need Sue Gray to say that for me. Uh, I, I don't know why his position is that he needs Sue Gray to confirm whether or not he wasn't there. Um, I'm not sure that line is one that's going to hold, if, I, if I'm honest, if that is the line that's coming out of number 10. Um, I, I, I mean, I just, I cannot even understand. Again, if you look at the timeline for this, my understanding is the Prime Minister had only been out of hospital having been severely ill with COVID for a few weeks when all of this was supposed to be kicking off. So I don't understand the, the private secretary that sent this email around thinking it was at all possible. I don't understand the, the dozens of people who appeared to have gone. I can't understand if the prime minister attended, why on earth he thought that that was um, the right thing to do. I, I, I literally, given where we all were in our own lives, given everything that we know, the people that I know that were, you know, unable to hug their mum at their father's funeral and support her. You know, people are furious about this, what they gave up, how difficult it was, what happened to their own lives. And, and to think that this was going on, you know, it just, it, 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 like I was saying, it, it is indefensible. It cannot be defended. Uh, Michael Fabricant MP has been tweeting as well today. He has been uh, offering a defence. He says, was the Downing Street party a flagrant breach of the rules as Labour are happily claiming Sue Gray will decide, but here are the facts. And then he goes on to say there are multiple offices in the Downing Street complex with key yeah, workers yeah. who know, are all I, operating I, I closely said, together. I, I and you've, you've probably seen the tweet just reading yeah, for the benefit I, I of our, let, our viewers. So is, that, is that a defence? Well, look, his point appears to be that lots of key workers were working in a building and then they went outside. Um, and had a drink afterwards. And because it was the same people that worked in the building, going outside for a drink means that it was all fine. But you know what? There were tens of thousands of key workers across the country. I don't think that hospital nurses and doctors were in the hospital garden after their shift ended, having a glass of rosy. I don't think that bin men were playing beer pong back in the garage when they'd finished their rounds. I don't think that people... Uh, you know, making sure that the, the country still had food in Morrison's or Tesco or Asda, you know, were, were having a big shindig get together um, in the loading docks when their shift finished. I, I don't think if that's the line that's coming out of Downing Street, then it's pretty weak and I don't think it's going to fly. Can I just check with you, have any of your contacts said to you or confirmed to you that the Prime Minister was at this event? I've not had any conversations about whether he was there or not. I don't know if he was there or was not, but he knows whether he was there or not. And he doesn't need Sue Gray to tell people that. Uh, 
you alluded to anger among colleagues of yours. Uh, mm -hmm. How deep is that anger? What is the scale of that anger? If we think back to uh, the North Shropshire well, by-election last month and, and, and people like Sir Roger Gale talking about, you know, three strikes and he's out. I, I mean, give us a sense of what know, the I, scale I, of the I, anger I is. I don't even think I don't even think that this is about whether you wear a blue rosette or a red rosette or a yellow rosette or an orange rosette. I, I really don't. I think it's about whether you had those experiences over the last two years where you were helping constituents, you had all of these cases of people that made massive sacrifices, whether you are personally getting any amount of abuse because of what, what appears to have been going on within number 10. And that's not just politicians, that's also civil servants, that's also special advisors. I, I mean, I, I cannot conceive of how this ever happened, how it seems to have happened multiple times, how anyone anyone thought it was a good idea to plan it to organize it to turn up to it and nobody just said well hang on a minute hang on a minute lads we're, we're telling everybody else that they're not allowed to meet a single person we're telling them they can't go to relatives funerals we're telling them they can't visit elderly people in care homes we can't we're telling them they can't visit dying relatives that like, how is this defensible it, it, you, you know and, and you don't have you know it's not about being a politician it's about being a human being that lived in the united kingdom during this time and you, you know, if number 10 doesn't understand the anger that is out there, then they're going to find out that anger pretty soon in the next couple of days because everybody has some form of sacrifice or somebody important in their life that gave a huge sacrifice that will never forgive whatever went on because it it just makes a mockery of this idea that we that we were doing a national endeavour to try and keep each other safe. Do, do you think Martin Reynolds, uh, Boris Johnson's uh, principal private secretary, who wrote this email, ought to resign? Do you think, for uh, the sake of the Conservative Party, that Boris Johnson needs to consider his position at this point? Well, I, I can't understand how, one, um, Martin Reynolds, who, to my knowledge, I've never met, I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight, um, I, I, I don't know, one, how he thought it was appropriate, uh, two, I don't know how this hasn't come out in the last year, to be honest with you, if 100 people got an email and it's been kicking around on people's servers for that long. Um, and I don't know how he's still in position. I don't know how, when that email came out, somebody didn't say, you can't do that. And there wasn't some form of sanction at the time rather than, yeah, let's go and get a couple of tins and go out the back. I, I just, I honestly, and he said, I don't know if you can tell from my voice, I honestly cannot understand the mindset. I can't understand it. And there were, though, the, there were there, um, comments, the comments we heard, is this for real, real uh, when, when that email uh, emerged? Yeah. Or, uh, so at the time, people were asking, is this for real? So it is, yes, there are yeah, questions I, about why know, it's I, taken I this sorry. long to emerge. Well, I also feel sorry for, you know, junior civil servants who, you know, aren't very well paid. You know, it's a very structured ladder down the bottom who were questioning this um, uh, and just being told that it, that it was all all fine because nobody wants to work in a compromised working environment. And th that is an enormous compromise that, and position that they were being put in and an unfair one. And and leadership is about setting an example. And, leadership uh, and, and let me just bring you back, sorry to interrupt. people they can't do something. Uh, let me just bring you back you and, and, sure and finally... people stick to the rules too. Finally, if I may, that question of Boris Johnson's position. Do you think that many of his MPs are, are, are fed up with all of this? Look, I mean, I think they got assurances before Christmas at the last flurry of these that um, the, the Sue Gray investigation was put a full stop to it. It hasn't. There is huge public anger about this. There's only two ways in which a Conservative Prime Minister, sitting for Conservative Prime Minister goes. One is that they fall on their sword, and I think that's unlikely to happen. It's clear that the Prime Minister wants to, to brazen this out. And, and to be fair, we still don't know whether he was there or not. Uh, we still don't know whether what he said to Parliament was um, misleading Parliament or not, and that's a very serious charge. And the second way is that a number of MPs write a letter to the 1922 committee. I think that um, nobody's going to be taking their letter out of the 1922 committee after this event, let's put it that way. OK, uh, Ruth Davidson, thank you very much for your thoughts on all of this. Uh, Ruth Davidson there, uh, former leader of the Scottish Conservatives.